Greetings, I. All praise King Selassie. Content classification, part two. Hopefully one day I can sit down and put all these thoughts together. As for now, um, I find it necessary to push out this information because I don't know if I'm real around. Um, you know, just speaking real, it's not like, you know, I've done anything wrong. It's that I haven't done anything wrong. You see? So, when we're dealing with content classification, notice it's all interconnected with the digital era, digital products. And it is what it is. It's content being classified. The Babylon has taken all the digital communications and formed this classification for each individual and use some individuals as certain examples, the outliers, you know, you got the median base, you got the outliers, and Babylon looking to study, you know, Babylon, you can, you can, you study the Rasta, it's bigger than you in this time. And, like, for example, Guantanamo Bay, the Babylon's saying, oh, these are the bad guys, these are the guys that don't want to get into pornography, these are the guys that don't want to do the drugs, these are the guys that don't want to make the money at other people's expense, these are the guys that don't want to go out and kill people, murder people, this kind of thing. They said, we need to change these guys. They got to be more like us. So they start to show them, you know, magazines, movies, whatever, right? And they monitor their behavior, see how it changes, and they log it down. They said, well, this personality changed when they were shown this content. So this content's classified with a numerical sequence. This personality is classified with a numerical sequence. You put them together, you get a change. You get a new personality. You know, one that loved Babylon, swaying from it, and all this kind of stuff. And so the Babylon man's saying, this is good. You know, we can bring them, be more like us, the Roman soldiers. And so they find other people with the same content classification and they show them the same content. That's pretty simple. You know, all digital stuff's plugged in. You put a DVD in, a DVD player, it's reading that, it's reading the number. It's saying, this person who purchased this DVD, hopefully with cash, put glasses on, mask and all that stuff because of the facial recognition, um, watched this movie and, and, and now look at the behavior of this person. Now they're watching this movie. Now they're watching that movie. Now they're working this job. Now they're doing, you know. So what it is is Babylon monitor behavior. They're saying, well, we don't like these people. These are loving people, peace-making people, um, freedom lovers. We got to get rid of them because there ain't much freedom left. Babylon taking it all, even the air, right? So the Babylon man, instead of having a whole bunch of people that know and overstand the truth and can you know, use that to perhaps, you know, prove their innocency, um, the Babylon man has to eliminate. So either the Babylon man can shoot dead, which would be a lot of shooting, um, or the Babylon man can, you know, try to induce mind control measures. <clears throat> And some people, you know, that are high, higher up in the chain of the Babylon will, you know, say, this is what we need. We need more different content to be shown to these people. And, you know, the content, it does do something, by the way. I mean, first of all, let's put it like this. You could show anything. I got all kinds of ideas. You could have movies where, like, you know, the pedophile is in his over office touching all these children. And then, you know, he gets the call and he's like, hey, you know, uh, we'll just get rid of them. You know, we don't give a shit. We're making more money. We got robots, you know. And just speak the truth instead of this deception that we hear from the CIA Hollywood. Um, so Babylon man don't want that. The Babylon man want to feed us lies, lies, deceives, deceive, deceive, because the Babylon man doesn't study and realize, again, you know, if, if the Babylon man go before Jack, 
on the day of judgment and a Babylon man standing next to a righteous man, what kind of a future is there? You know, so the Babylon man, he, he believes that he can, he can bring people down to his level and, and, and crush them underneath the soles of his feet. And then on the day of judgment, that, you know, Jah will look upon the Babylon man and say, yes, you know, you haven't been that good, but look at all these other people. So the Babylon man, he's measuring himself amongst himself. Yeah? You know, is, is evil judges evil for good and good for evil? And so with the classification, everything, cars, this camera, the movie, the clothes you wear, it's classified. The music you listen to, it's classified. And the Babylon is watching your behavior. Yeah? And like, for example, on YouTube, the Babylon man gonna try to show myself those images that he believes will corrupt myself if I were to view them. Now, I believe, I've come to realize that you cannot force someone to sin. The Babylon can't force myself to sin, but the Babylon can force sin upon us. And that's what the Babylon has done, force sin upon us. And if you are, are someone who, who is, you know, having sin forced upon you, not willingly, you have a right to defend yourself. And that's exactly what Ross has done. Defend himself against the onslaught of evil.